Hey what's up guys and welcome. This is part 2 of switching from console gaming to PC gaming. If you haven't seen part 1 then just click here somewhere to learn all the differences of console gaming and PC gaming. But this is part 2, what do you need? Well, the basics of a computer system is this. You have the computer, you have your input devices, you have a screen and you have a solid internet connection. The first thing you need to do is decide a budget. There's no good looking at all these different parts and you know thinking, wow, they look good. You need to be realistic. Set yourself a budget. How much do you want to spend on this computer? And the good news is there are loads of different sorts of costings out there. So if you need parts that are quite cheap, you can get parts that are quite cheap. But equally, if you've got quite a lot of money, or at least a lot of money to spend on a PC, then you can do that. But if you want to learn more about costs, then hang on and wait for part three, where I'll be going over that in more detail. Now it's the PC itself that is obviously going to take the largest amount of time to choose and you need to know what's going into your machine. If you build it yourself then you're going to know exactly what goes into your machine and you're going to know what it all does. The other benefit is of course that it can be cheaper but obviously the main downside is you've actually got to learn how to build a PC. Whereas if you go out and buy one, obviously you can get it in a store but most people will get it online these days and it will get delivered to your house and then you can just plug it in and great, your PC gaming. Obviously though, the main downside with that is that you don't always know what's in your PC. You might get some parts that you then can't upgrade later, but you are paying someone effectively to build your machine and choose all your parts and make sure it works. So it's going to cost you extra money. Now if you're on the fence and aren't sure whether to build or buy your PC, then the thing I would recommend is for you to actually build it yourself, just because then you know what everything does. And so if something goes wrong or you want to upgrade your PC later, then you can. You don't need to outsource any help, shall we say. But if you are on the fence, then I've made a video all about this sort of stuff, about whether you should be building or buying your PC, and you can find that in the description below, and that should help you make up your mind well, what is the right thing to do for you. Obviously, we are all different. But what actually is in a PC? Well, obviously you have a case, that is the most obvious thing. You've got to have something to actually put all your stuff in. Then you have a motherboard, and on that motherboard sits a processor, and that processor again has a cooler, which comes with the processor, or you can get a third party one. You also have the RAM, which is of course random access memory. You have the graphics card, you don't have to have a graphics card, but if you're into gaming then you need a graphics card. Um, you have your hard drives, these can be um, standard hard drives, which use uh, magnetic tape to kind of spin, and they're quite big and chunky, you'll probably recognise them if you see them. Or you could get, well, I would say, or you could have a solid state drive in there, which I'll t talk a bit more a bit later. And then you also have your operating system, and I almost forgot the power supply because obviously you need something to power that thing. Now, that is quite a lot of stuff, and if you don't really know much about PCs, you know, you want to know more about PCs, but unfortunately, you know, you're not born with the knowledge. So it is quite a good idea to brush up on each of your components so you know what you're buying into. I've done a few simple guides which are on my channel if you want to know more specifics about a single part, but I'll give you sort of like a broad overview of the main stuff you need to know. The first one being that your case and motherboard have a sort of link, and that link is that they have standard sizes, and you have ATX, MATX, or Mini ITX. What do these mean? Well, these are the sizes of the motherboard, or it might be called the mainboard, but it is actually the motherboard. And the motherboard can either be quite big, and you can go as large as E80X, um, which is just a standard big ATX board that's even longer. Um, but the main ones are ATX, which is the biggest one. It's not the biggest one, but for this, it's the biggest one. And then you have MATX, which is micro ATX, so obviously it's a little bit smaller. And then you have even smaller than that, which is mini ITX. Now, if you buy a massive case, great, you can put pretty much, obviously check, but you can put pretty much any motherboard you want in it. If you buy a tiny little cube case like the Corsair 250D, then that isn't going to fit very much at all. And so if you go out and buy an ATX motherboard for a case that is only rated for a mini ITX, obviously it's not going to work. So when you're shopping around, make sure both of them support the same sorts of motherboards. And then the other main thing to actually note is that the processor must fit in the motherboard. And this is done with what is called a socket type. A motherboard has a socket type and then the processor fits in that socket. It's you know like a jigsaw puzzle. If they're different, they're actually not going to fit. So make sure that your motherboard, so we'll take a Haswell 1150, only works with a Haswell processor. So make sure the socket types are the same. If this all sounds a little bit complicated, it's kind of not really. 
but I'll clear this up a bit later in a separate video which will be like a shopping guide to making sure you can get all your parts, so do stay tuned for that. But what is it that actually make your games tick and make them run really well? Well that's mainly done by the CPU and the GPU. CPU is of course the processor and the GPU is the main bit, if you like, on your graphics card. The graphics card power the graphics and then the CPU kind of power like all the game engine-y stuff. Um, and you need both things to actually work in tandem and obviously they do this, but if one of them is say bottlenecking the other, so say you get a really expensive graphics card set up for Titans and then you have a Pentium processor, uh, yeah you, something's going to give and that will obviously and be the processor. You need both of them to kind of work at the same sort of level. If you have a fairly cheap graphics card then you can get a fairly cheap um, sort of processor with that. But if you get a really high-end graphics card then you're going to need a higher end processor. They both need to be able to keep up with each other or you'll basically be wasting money. So then, because both of these components are really important and are the main deciding factors in your games, make sure that the larger portion, portion, make sure that the larger portion of your um, sort of funds, your budget, go towards these two components. Of course, there are loads of other things in your machine that you should be spending money on as well. Uh, the main mention actually is the SSD, the solid state drive. And yes, you don't have to have one, but they're so cheap nowadays, well, obviously relatively cheap, and they just speed your PC up massively. Uh, give you an idea, if I just want to open, say, I don't know, uh, Sony Movie Studio, this is a terrible example because it actually takes a bit of time to open, um, but it opens up really quick. So the main thing is that SSDs speed up your computer and make them run really quick. Righty-ho then, that is the PC. What about the other stuff? Well, I say screen, I don't say monitor, because you might want a TV. I have a TV over there, in fact, that's what I'm actually reading off now. But obviously we have monitors as well. The majority of people will go for a monitor or maybe go for more than one monitor and um, just because they're a lot cheaper and they are kind of more optimized to actually work with your PC so things like lower response time so stuff is more responsive but if you want like a console like experience then you might want to get a TV or you might want to use the TV you've already got and then you won't need a monitor at all obviously that is the choice that you make um, but if you are getting a monitor then the main things to note are that and there are obviously exceptions, and this is an exception in itself. You want to go for either an IPS or a VA panel. There are a few other types, but the main reasons I say that is just because that kind of determines what the colours and like the blacks are like. So this here is a TN panel. This is an IPS. The colours on this look significantly better than this one, and this one was a more expensive monitor. But I'll quickly say that this monitor, the reason that is a TN panel is because that has a higher refresh rate at 120 hertz. But there is more on this. If you want to know more about how to choose a monitor, then just click the link. To, the, click the link. Yeah, click the link in the description below. And again, that will show you loads of stuff in detail without being too complicated because I could ramble about this forever. So you've got your PC, you've got your monitor. Last things you need are these beautiful things, not not a wallet. Forget about it. Well, you need the wallet to obviously be able to buy them. But you need this, a controller, you need the mouse, and you need the keyboard, the input devices. Now, obviously, having a controller isn't essential, but I'm guessing that if you're a console gamer, you're probably quite accustomed to them. The good news is that with controllers, you can pretty much just bring them straight across. If you want to use a wireless 360 controller like I do, then you just need to buy a 10, 20 pound dollar yeah, um, adapter and then it's literally just a case of plug and play and you are ready to go. If you have a PlayStation then if you've got Bluetooth in your PC great and you can pair that up and you need to do a few different tweaks to get that to work but that will, that will work just as well and the same goes for the PlayStation 4 controller um, you can just plug that in. Same actually with the PS3 controller, you can just use the standard USB cable, do a few tweaks and then you're good to go. So that's your console like experience out of the way but you do need a mouse and keyboard if you're literally going to use it as like a games console, um, then you still need a mouse and keyboard just to do the initial setup. But if, and I would strongly advise this, that you are going to use it as a proper PC, um, then you're going to need a decent mouse and keyboard. As a general rule, if it says gaming on it, it should be pretty good. Obviously there are loads of different exceptions. Um, the main thing is buy from a decent brand. If you're after a keyboard, then you have what's known as a membrane keyboard and a mechanical keyboard. Both of them are, well, both of them have a price, both of them have a level of responsive list, and guess which way round it is. The membrane one is cheaper and less responsive, and the mechanical one, which makes very loud 
noises and my scripts just just gone. That was very sensible. Um, then yeah, you can either get a membrane which is cheaper or a mechanical which is better but more expensive. Same goes with the mouse. Um, if you buy a cheaper sort of mouse, um, then it might be less responsive. If you buy a higher, more expensive um, spec and price mouse, then you're going to get what's known as a higher DPI. And that's, I think it's dots per inch, yeah, dots per inch, uh, which basically means it's going to be more responsive and the higher that number, the less you need to move your mouse about. So if I move that tiny bit, I've got it quite high, but if you have it quite low, and if I like use one of the buttons, then it moves really slowly. Um, but the higher, obviously, the, the amount you spend on the mouse and the keyboard, then the better experience, to an extent, you're going to get. But as this is your first time getting into PC gaming, then just a fairly budget from a respective brand, keyboard and mouse that say gaming on it will do you just fine. Just as a sort of, um, just to let you know what I started out with, I had a Logitech G400 mouse and I had a Sidewinder from Microsoft keyboard. Is it Sidewinder? I don't know. Now the final thing is a solid internet connection and to be honest you've probably already got this. What do I mean by this? Well ideally you want to have a straight wire connection through a gigabit um, Ethernet connection that goes through switches or through routers straight into your PC. Great, that's going to be the best way to do it. If you can't do that, then you should invest in some things called power line adapters. These just plug into your power line connection. So, say oh, I'm going to try and guess your house, your house or your home, whatever it is. Um, you have the internet coming in here, but your room is or your space for gaming is all the way over here. How do you wire this up without one straight wire? You get a power line which plugs into the wall so your power line connection, and then it just travels across from there to wherever you want it, and then you've got a solid wired connection going between the two. It's not quite as good as having a proper ethernet connection, but it is a lot better than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi sadly is the last resort. If you don't have a choice, then it will do, but you're gonna get higher pings, so it means that your games are going to be less responsive, and people will probably shoot you down in games like Battlefield 4, and your download speeds will probably be affected as well. If you're right next to your router, then obviously it's not so bad. But if you can, you really should be using a wired, yeah, wi I almost said wireless. You should be using a wired connection either via power line or by Ethernet. And that is everything you need. I hope this video has been quite useful and has told you all about the stuff that you need to actually get into PC gaming. But how much is it going to set you back? How sad is this fella going to get? Find out in part three, and it's going to be going over stuff like how much console gaming costs versus how much PC gaming costs, and of course how much the actual PC itself and monitors and all that sort of stuff is going to cost you. So find out more for that in part three. But wait, how do you watch part three? Well, it'll be live next Friday, or if obviously a week's passed since this video has gone live, then it will already be live and you can just click here. If it's not live, or for more videos obviously like this, which I hope that you would like to see, then subscribe to PC Centric. As always, give this video a like if yes, top quality stuff once again, he's done a good job. But sadly, I'm looking at my script because I've forgotten the witty remark that I had made. What had I said? I said, yeah, that's what I said. I said, sadly, if your judgement has been clouded by this video, then leave a dislike. Was that worth me actually going over and have a look? Leave a comment below. And if you think this video has sort of jogged your memory and there's something you want to ask, leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching as always guys, and I will see you in part three, or hopefully in the next video. Thanks for watching.